You need to try this. iPadOS 26 is now available for everyone, or at least the beta version is anyway. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you'll have seen my videos following along with the developer beta of iPadOS 26 and how the massive changes it brings affect GarageBand for iOS users in particular. Well, now you can dive in and give it a try yourself. Unlike the developer beta, which required users to have an Apple developer account, anyone with a compatible iOS device can install the iPadOS 26 public beta and give it a whirl for themselves. In this video, I'm taking a look at some of the features iPad musicians will find most useful in iPadOS 26, but quick disclaimer first. Yes, while the public beta for iPadOS 26 is far more stable and less prone to crashes and weird stuff happening than the developer beta was, though I mean it's definitely not perfect, more on that a bit later on, it's still a beta, so make sure you back up your device before upgrading and maybe just hold off for the full release entirely if you're currently working on important projects, etc. Right then iPadOS 26 brings a very macOS-like experience to the iPad, and nowhere is this more apparent than in the new menu bar. Swipe down or move your mouse pointer to the top of your screen, and you'll get a full-on menu bar just like on the Mac. This is present in most apps, though, with different degrees of usefulness. Logic, for example, still only has a couple of menu options, and I suspect most apps will receive an update of some kind to fix this in September when the full version of iPadOS 26 launches. In GarageBand though, this gives you access to things like recent projects, playback controls, editing options like split and loop, automation tools, and more. You can even access GarageBand's settings, which were previously hidden away in the settings app right from the menu. It's worth noting that none of the options here add any new functionality to GarageBand. It just groups things together like keyboard shortcuts and things you'd usually tap somewhere on the screen to access into menu form. It makes working with an attached keyboard quite a bit easier, which is what I think Apple are going for with this. Probably the biggest addition to iPadOS 26 is the new windowed apps, which allows users to have multiple apps open in their own resizable windows. It also completely changes the way you import samples and MIDI files into GarageBand. I can tap and drag on the bottom corner of the GarageBand window to make it smaller. If I then tap on the empty space, I can open another app and have it open in its own window on the same screen at the same time. If I select the Files app, I can then navigate to a folder full of samples, for example. I can then tap and hold on a sample and select Quick Look to preview it. Then I can just drag and drop the sample from the Files app window straight into GarageBand. When I demoed this previously in the developer beta of iPadOS 26, I noted that dragging and dropping files like this actually locks GarageBand up, forcing you to close and reopen your project. In the public beta, yeah, this still happens. GarageBand still freezes. Yes, this is maybe a bit disappointing, really, but as I mentioned earlier, hopefully an update to GarageBand itself in September will fix this issue. The exciting new system level audio controls are still all present and correct in the public beta of iPadOS 26. In Control Center, which you still access by swiping down from the top corner, there's this new GarageBand specific menu that you'll see when the app is open. From here, I can turn on the new global noise cancellation feature for the current microphone. With no audio interface or USB mic connected, this defaults to the iPad's built-in microphone. It blocks out ambient noise, which could be handy if you're recording music in an untreated room or a noisy environment, or if you want to capture a voice memo while out and about, as the feature is present in that app too. So this is the iPad microphone without any voice isolation function added. 
and this is the same iPad microphone with the voice isolation function turned on. If you do have an audio interface attached to your iPad, you'll be able to access this menu, which allows you to switch between the iPad's built-in microphone and the audio interface on the fly by simply tapping and selecting them. If I throw an adapter onto the iPad, I can attach another audio interface and it'll show up in this menu as selectable too. Then I can switch between them by tapping and selecting them. It's important to note that they can't all be used simultaneously. You can switch between them easily, but only one can be active at a time. Let me know if you've installed the iPadOS 26 public beta on your iPad and how you're finding things so far. And for more info on hooking up audio interfaces and how to make the most of them in GarageBand for iOS, watch this video next.